and of manganese. Now, obviously, in 1948, you're going to be like winning the lottery, you know, if you get this crop instead of that crop. You, you've been lucky. And this would be, I have average there that's technically not the, it's the median, it should be the median would be the technical term there. The highest and the lowest. Well, at a random sample, you're going to average this much ma manganese if you eat snap beans. This is, the United States Department of Agriculture doesn't do high, low, and median, they just do an average. So the average they produced here in 1997, as you see the pattern, the manganese has disappeared. It's gone. It's not there anymore. Now we understand the, the process. The crop takes all the trace elements out and they only put N, P, and K back in. So this is the process and here's the evidence. Here's the smoking gun. That food doesn't have trace elements in it anymore. They still look like snap beans and the manganese is gone. Now, in my book, I, it's hard to present this data in a table because you have these columns, you know, highest and lowest and everything. But the table is in my book and it has all of Dr. Baer's measurements and then the modern measurements for those three trace elements. But I'll show you just a few more to show you that the pattern holds not only for manganese in snap beans, but Here's manganese in cabbage. It's gone. It's just not there anymore. The average in 1997 is right at the lowest ever measured in 1948. Our North American bodies, and I presume bodies around the world, that in regions where NPK fertilizer is used, their bodies in 1997 don't have the manganese in it. They did in 1948 and they don't anymore. It disappeared. And we have a whole new crop of chronic degenerative diseases now that we didn't have then. And one more, one last one along that line. So it isn't just manganese we're looking at. Here's another example. It's iron in cabbage. The highest in 1948 was 9.4 milligrams. The lowest was 2 milligrams. And the average iron now in cabbage in the 1990s is about 6 tenths of 1 milligram. The iron has disappeared from that food. There's no point in eating that. You couldn't eat a hundred heads of cabbage and get enough iron out of it anymore. You know, the next topic on my outline is why supplementation is essential. Do I need to explain? <laughs> it's not there anymore. It's not in the food. I've practiced as a clinical nutritionist for 25 years. And I can tell you in the 1970s when I started, the average sick person if I could get them to switch from manufactured foods to whole foods, like where they're cooking grains and, and eating good quality meat and, and beans and tofu and vegetables and that, you could see within five days an improvement in their health and within six weeks they would feel like they'd been raised from the dead in the 1970s. That stopped working about 10 years ago. This is just what I observed clinically. This was before I did any of this work, and I did some of this work because I wanted to understand why what I was seeing clinically in front of me was happening. I almost didn't believe it. You know, uh, Why isn't this working anymore? The reason why, the whole food diet doesn't contain the minerals anymore. You can no longer get it out of the whole food diet if those are agricultural foods. Clinically, I still recommend for all my patients that they eat a whole foods diet and that if they eat meat that it should be high quality meat with no pesticides you know organic meat which is you know available here but that they also need to especially seek out minerals they need to seek out minerals and the foods I usually recommend are that if they eat foods from the sea saltwater fish are going to have that spectrum of trace elements in it because they will have taken it out of the sea and out of the sea plants and I recommend that people eat sea plants uh, seaweeds because these are full of tra minerals and trace elements and I also recommend that they take a full spectrum broad spectrum mineral supplement such as the people here manufacture and that, and that you are so interested in I give an example of this process isn't completely new the problem of people starving for minerals and, and seeking out and going to great lengths to seek out mineral supplementation is not new there's a story in the 1930s nutritional anthropologist his name was Weston Price. He was a dentist in Cleveland, Ohio, and he had grown up at the turn of the century back when there used to be all those minerals in the food. Right? He was born in the 1880s, 
and he grew up on a farm and people were eating plenty of fresh fruit and vegetables and people had a strong constitution they had good bones they had a good jaw right by the 1930s he's practicing as a dentist and a large portion of the population in the United States was now moving into the cities they were moving off the farms and they would have children in the cities and the children would not eat farm food they would eat industrial food and what he saw in his office was that the second generation was weaker and sickly with poor bone structure and poor dental health than their parents had he speculated well why is that and he says well there's something wrong in the, in the diet there's something wrong with the industrial foods in the diet so he decided to do a controlled scientific experiment where he would get a group of people who had no tooth decay and had healthy bone structure and he'd analyze their diet and then he'd take a group of people with poor bone structure and, and uh, prominent tooth decay and he'd examine their diet well he ran into a problem is he couldn't find in 1930s he couldn't find any group of people anywhere in the United States who had healthy teeth and bones so he was inspired he says well I may have to travel to find some traditional culture so he ended up spending most of that decade traveling around the world he and his wife they traveled to areas of Europe islands off Scotland African tribes Indian tribes in Canada North America and South America South Sea Islanders uh, Australian Aborigines uh, New Zealand Maoris he, he traveled to more than 20 different cultures and examined people's teeth and their bone structure and took their pictures <laughs> And what he found in all those areas was he found that the world was in change in the 1930s and he found that people were in Africa there would be one tribe that was isolated and they'd be eating their traditional diet and there'd be another tribe 20 miles away where there was a road built and they had a trading post and in the decade before they had introduced sugar white flour oil canned food modern foods and everything and what he found was the people eating the traditional foods had less than one half of one percent tooth decay and they had large bones and he took pictures of this he didn't just say they had large bones he photo documented he'd stand these people side by side or put their pictures side by side and you see the one the one uh, I have some of them reprinted in my book and if you're interested in seeing those pictures they're a powerful motivator for eating a better diet <laughs> the book is called nutrition and physical degeneration and it's by Weston Price and it's available from Keats Publishing in the United States. It has more than 180 photographs there. But on one side, you'll see a person, he had, them, he had them smile so you could see their teeth. And with a big smile on the face, big white teeth, perfect teeth, broad jaw, wisdom teeth came in, didn't have to be pulled out, and I'm telling you, a look of joy on their face. And next to that would be the person eating the modern foods, and they would be thin, pinched face, narrow jaw, rotten teeth crooked teeth and an anguished look on their face and I tell you seeing those pictures while I was writing my book I looked at all those pictures and studied them and was immersed in them and one day I have to just say I was shocked when I went and walked around on the sidewalk because the people in our civilization are like the after pictures except we have our teeth fixed and we have makeup on okay. <laughs> Dr. Price analyzed the changes in diets from there and he, he suggested several things number one was the introduction of destructive foods like sugar is a destructive food refined flour is a destructive food things like corn oil uh, unbalanced oils too many omega-6 fatty acids in the oils they're destructive foods but he also analyzed the diets for, for nutrient content and what he found was that across the board the people who were degenerating and falling apart and their bone structure was deteriorating that their diets were radically depleted in minerals mineral depletion so this is a before and after going one way if you would like a before and after pictures look going the other way you can look at some of those pictures and there's a dramatic change in in people's health if they have adequate mineral nutrition you can see I mentioned the pathology goes functional disease organic disease so the photograph captures the organic changes but the photograph also captures the functional changes in the look on the people's face you would have to see it to believe it the look of peace and joy on one hand and a look of, of anguish on the other and you can see the anxiety and the depression and the and the mental torture from mineral starvation it's a terrible anguishing condition there's a problem with taking a particular disease like say I have osteoporosis 
so I better take calcium. We're really asking for trouble if we take just one mineral. And nothing shows it better than this particular chart. This is from the Journal of Orthomolecular Medicine in 1990. I'll explain the chart first.